You know, it's interesting. Um, the labor of love. Love is one of the most confusing words in our language. Like, what does it mean? So when, when I say the labor of love, what does that mean to you? Sometimes it can bring up a lot of feelings of expectation, overwhelm, exhaustion. Because when we look at it as we have to do labor to show our love, that's conditional love. Love that's really bound up in expectation and um, responsibilities and you need to show me. You know, and then we labor to love. But the labor of love that we're talking about today is very different than that. It's the labor of love that is unconditional. And it was brought up, you talked about it, Sage, it's that labor of love that comes from the roots of our being. Each one of us is rooted in spirit, in love, in God, in goodness, in creativity, in service and love. That's, what we, that's what's inside of us. Just like a, well, God is love, and God is all there is. So what we're made of, we're all children of one essence. We're all that offspring. Last week I talked at the fingerprint of God is what's at our soul, our uniqueness. But we all have that in us. We're rooted in love. But we have to get to it, just like a plant or a tree or vegetables or a flower needs to get their nourishment from their roots. If we want a, our labor of love to be unconditional, we have to de dig deep, dig down deep to find out the stuff of which we're made. And then to labor in love comes much more naturally and beautifully. It reminds me of... Um, God is love and depends on us for its expression, so that's what we're here to do. And we are co-creators with spirit. Now, co-creators means we need the power and essence of God to be living, the heartbeat to be alive, the creative spirit, but God needs us for its expression, to see what it can do through us, as us. There was a... Um, preacher that was walking down the road in kind of a rural area, and he saw this absolutely gorgeous farm, beautifully manicured. The crops were all well cared for and beautifully growing, and the barn and the house and the fence were painted beautifully, and even the road that led, led up to the house through the, through the uh, farm had beautiful trees and flowers. And so the fellow, the preacher, waited until he saw the farmer come out, and he came up to me, he hailed him, and he said, oh my goodness, what a gorgeous farm that God has blessed you with. And the farmer said, hmm, yeah, God's blessed me, but you should have seen it when he had it by himself. <laughs> That's the co-partnership, the co-creative stuff. We've been blessed with the gift of our life, our lifetime. We've been blessed with that. Do we look at it as a labor to get through this? You know, what else do I have to put up with? Yes, I've said that a few times this week. But anyway, we, we have our ups and downs, okay? But do we look at it that way or do we look at it as a gift that we've been given, knowing that we're supplied with all the tools we need to really create a meaningful, important experience for ourselves and others? You know, God's love is just natural. God can't help but expressing love because that's what it is. It's that energy. Human beings are the only creatures that can get deny that love. We can have doubts and fears and worries and we can use this free will of our thinking to push that love away. Because conditional love comes from our thoughts, our thought patterns. And it's just like Bruce was talking about. When you change your thinking, what happens, Bruce? You get enthusiastic, right? It's, that's what happens. When, when we're thinking, but the feeling of love in our hearts, God speaks to our hearts in the language of feeling. Love is a feeling that comes. And we can decide if we're going to spend our life letting our mind that is conditioned run us, or if we're going to take time to reach those roots and come up with something better and more uh, wonderful and beautiful. 
You know, when uh, Reverend Sage was mentioning Essential Spirituality, that was a book that's been on my shelf for a long time. And when it's Sunday night and I realized I need themes for the next month, I go, oh, what should I do? So I grabbed that book and I realized it's one, if, it, you, if I'd grabbed an Ernest Holmes book, they are all falling apart. Pieces are coming out because they're used so much. This book was brand new. You know, it, it didn't have any. I said, I wonder where I got that, but I like essential spirituality. That's probably why I bought it. And um, I opened the book, and I was looking through it, and I thought, oh, wow, this has some interesting things. And I looked at who wrote it, Roger Walsh. And Roger Walsh is a um, MD, a PhD. He's a professor at UCI. You must know him. Susan, have you taken a class? Yeah. And his whole research there has been on how to enhance well-being physically, uh, psychologically, socially, and spiritually. And he talks about our emotions, how important it is to really touch our emotions, but then get a grip on them. And I want to read you a quote from him. Well, first of all, he said, emotions rule our lives because they color our perceptions, they direct our motives and our lives, et cetera, et cetera. But he says, what we feel within ourselves, we find reflected in our world. I'll say that again. What we feel within ourselves, we see reflected in our world. If we feel angry, we look on a hostile world. If we feel fearful, we see threats everywhere. But when love fills our mind, when love fills our mind, we see a world that yearns to love and be loved. Which one do you want? I want the love one, a world that wants to give love and receive love. That's the place we need to be. You know, if we look at, we need to really, I think the thing we're seeking more than anything right now in the world is understanding. And this labor of love that comes from that God center in us, when we do things just because we know we're expressing God, we're doing God's work, we're doing work that's fulfilling and of service, we need to see beyond ourselves. We need to step over our egos, how big they are, to the, see the bigger picture. You know, a labor of love that comes from the heart can be random acts of service random acts of kindness. It can be that thing we do just for the joy and love of doing it. You know, when we start looking at things for just the way they are, we can get really bogged down in the details. Joseph Campbell, whom I love so much, I can just pick up his book, uh, The Joseph Cam Campbell Companion, and open it to almost any page, and there's words of wisdom that I just love. You know, he talks about our whole journey of life is about compassion which to me is the same as love. So he yeah, has so all that, that's what we're here for. You know, our life has no meaning except the meaning we give it. Well, he has a little joke in there, um, that book or um, another book he wrote, but he talks about um, when he gets really frustrated, he thinks about grass. He said, I'm not the kind you smoke, um, <laughs> the kind that you step on. Anyway, um, he, he said, I think about grass and you know, if the grass is thinking and says, you know, a guy comes out here every two weeks and mows me down, what's the use? Why should I keep on going on if I keep getting cut down? And he said he can't figure it out. And he thinks about that because, yeah, we get pushed down in our lives. We get cut down. Things happen. But what are we here to do? To grow and become and have a greater understanding to see the big picture. So when I was talking about um, uh, spirituality. I don't know if I said that word, but I meant to. Anyway, um, love overcomes fear. So if we have any of the other lower emotions, love's the thing that's going to transform it, not by aggression or power, but just by that transformative vibrational energy that changes it. Well, in um, Roger Walsh's book, he talks about uh, spirituality and the different religious traditions that talk about true service, which I equate and he equated as really the labor of love. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says, let all that you do be done in love. And so Walsh talks about three different traditions, and he said he gives the example of Christianity and Jesus and how his life 
was an example of selfless service. His teaching, his healing, sacrifice on the cross, he did this for his deep love of humanity. And that's that deep love of just uh, selfless service. And then he talks about uh, Buddhism. And one of the practices, the main practice in Buddhism is compassion. The bodhisattva vow is to uh, alleviate the suffering from all beings. And in that, Sacred, uh, compassionate service, it's about love is more than just that feeling, it's about action. We have to take action. And if we look at Mahatma Gandhi, a Hindu, he said, if you want to, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And so this feeling of selfless service, this labor of love from doing the work we're meant to do, which is to express the goodness of life, to rise up, to recognize who we are as a person, affects other people. It does. It affects other people. Our energy affects other people. And we have to remember that. And if we think of, um, you know, again, the Master Jesus, at the Last Supper, his final real meal, he knew what was happening. He knew what was going to happen to him. He gave his last commandment to his disciples. And he said, this is my command. Love each other. That's it. That's going to change the world. Just love each other. Do that for me. That's, that's my command to you. And if we're going to look away, I know... We are diverse, we are unique, we are special, but we also are unified. And from where we came, a, a unified human family, and if we're gonna come together and be able to love each other in spite of our differences, we need to get to that roots of our being, to tap that place of love. And the first thing that happens when we, we can tolerate other people, and right now, that may be the first step we can take, is to tolerate other people who think differently, act differently, feel differently, all that stuff. But after that, tolerance comes understanding. And here's something by Ernest Holmes talking about, um, you know, for me, understanding what I do, I have to put myself in someone else's shoes. I have to see why would they act like that or say that or behave that way. What's, why is that? I want to understand. I don't want to disagree sometimes. But um, I, I, I want to really understand. And here's what Ernest Holmes says. When we let the love that is within us, it's in all of us, not some of us. God doesn't just bless some of us and not others. That blessing goes out to everyone. It's how much we accept. When we let the love that is within us go out to the God who is in all people and things, that's when we are loving with our true heart, our soul, and our mind. When we recognize the spirit that's within us is the same spirit that's in everyone. This is loving our neighbors as ourselves. That's what it is. That's when we love our neighbors as ourselves. When we can, it takes, that is a labor of love that we need to work at to bring ourselves to a place of tolerance and understanding so we can be more accepting in this whole world. And it's interesting, Sage, one mind. You know, who did I come to that I wanted to end with, of course, in thoughts of just the labor of sacred, selfless love and service is Mother Teresa. And if you think of that beautiful readings that Reverend Sage gave us, Mother Teresa, Teresa lived her life amongst the poorest of poor people. Can you imagine what that would be like? But she found that labor of love that didn't come from, yes, she got exhausted, yes, she had dark nights of the soul because we're human, but she could do this work so selflessly and so dependably and so consistently that her energy attracted other people to join her. And she ended up with a whole, a whole bunch of nuns around the world and in the, that did her work because of that labor of love that came from her heart. So I'd like us today during this Labor Day weekend and beyond, not just now, but all, just uh, fuel it up. I want us to think about where in our life can we be more loving? Not from a place, oh, I should be loving, but to recognize someone 
Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Think about something bigger than yourself. Just step over that smallness that we can be bigger. Where can we do that? And where can be we be open to receiving love where we've been shut off? Because so many people shut off from love because it's, it's too scary. But where can we open ourselves in all directions to that? The, I, I wrote down several of, of the quotes you had, uh, Reverend Sage, but here's one that I thought was really special I hadn't heard for. She asked us, be the living expression of God's kindness. Be the living expression of God's kindness. It's soft. It's sweet. It can be a smile. It can be a touch. The living expression. And how can we use that so we can touch more people around us. So I'm going to close by making you repeat after me, but let's do a little prayer first. Let's just unwrap ourselves, put our feet on the ground, open, our, open ourselves to let that, to touch the roots of our being, which happen to be love, compassion, goodness, kindness, creativity, potentiality. All that good stuff is right here already. We don't have to go anywhere. We just open up to something more. And as we open up to that more, I just know in this moment that we feel that light that is love, that is healing, that is joy, that is goodness, that is enthusiasm, just pulsing through our veins and our heart and our mind, that we don't just feel the compassion and the caring and the healing and the creativity and potential that's in us, but we exude it, we become it, because we allow it to be the truth of who we are. We know it, we claim it. It's not something we just think about. We know it's true, it's who we are. And whatever difficulty or challenge just present itself to us now, we know we have what we need right now to see the bigger picture, to bring greater understanding, to bring more love into that situation, to just sealing that into our being, breathing it in. I want you to speak with me the same things we have said so often. I learned it long, long, long ago and it stuck with me in my veins. Just say right now, you can open your eyes so you're not sleeping in this. You can open your eyes right now. Just say with me because we want to leave enthusiastic, right? We want to be that enthusiasm. I want you to say, I'm alive. I'm, alive. I'm alert. I'm, alert. I'm, enthusiastic. I'm enthusiastic. I feel good. I look good. I am good. And so it is. And let those fingerprints of God that are you just be out there and touch your world in gorgeous ways. Thank you for being here. I love you all. Thank you.